Okay, so um, I've now got the microphone switched on, which means I need to try and talk more quietly, because otherwise I will deafen not just the front people, but everybody. Um, this is what we're going to um, go through today, and you're probably going to get fed up of hello and welcome this week, and you'll hear it in many different ways from many different people. So I'm going to try and provide something useful and to provide you with some contacts for key people um, at the university in the Faculty of Science that will be able to help you. Um, first of all, some introductions. I'm Wendy Lawson, the Dean of Science, and I'm also in the Department of Geography. So those of you who take geography will see me at some stage in your um, study here at the University of Canterbury. Also here we have um, Professor Paul Fleming. Do you want to stand up, Paul? Paul is the Pro Vice Chancellor of the College of Science and together Paul and I are um, in charge of making sure that the learning that you receive, the opportunities you receive and the facilities you receive are up to scratch. So we work closely together on those things. Anything you want to say, Paul? Okay. Yeah. Okay, well, I'd like to welcome you all to the, to the College of Science, and those of you who are going to be studying BSCs, I'd like to congratulate you on your, your wisdom and insight in having chosen the University of Canterbury, and uh, we're certainly looking forward to working with you. Uh, if there, there's a message that I have for you, it's please do keep in contact with us. Uh, particularly if things are going a bit pear shift or something like that, please do keep in contact. That is one of our, our main uh, messages to you this morning. So more than that, simply welcome. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Paul. Three really important names and faces that almost certainly you will come across at some stage in your university career are the three people in the college office who deal with students and you may already have met one or more of these people. First of all, um, Tracy Robinson who's a student advisor for the College of Science and Tracy's down here at the front. If you, you may have met Tracy already, you may have had an email from Tracy and um, there's an opportunity to get further course advice this week, you probably already know about that, but Tracy and Isabel Phillips, who's the academic manager there on the left of the slide, are running advice sessions as we speak, which is where Isabel is at the moment, offering advice to other students, second years and third years. Also, Sally Barrett, who's the college office administrator, if you need to make an appointment to see Tracy, Isabel or myself, then Sally's the person you'll be talking to. Also here today, um, we have key people from the academic departments where the courses are delivered, um, and I'm just going to get these people to stand up and show you who they are, so that if you have questions later, you can direct your question at the right person, or even after the session, um, at, outside in the lobby, um, I think most people are available to stay for a few minutes after. So Daniela Liggett is here from um, Antarctic Studies, Daniela's here. Um, Andy Coburn and Simon Brown from Physics and Astronomy, down here at the front. I'm from Computer Science. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. Um, Jan Wakara is here from Chemistry. Paul Brody is here from Biological Sciences. Payman Zara is not here from Geography. Oh, you are here. Hello, Payman. Payman's breaking all the rules by sitting at the back. Um, Kate Pedley is here from Geological Sciences. Irene David and James Degnan are here from Maths and Stats. Paul Russell is Paul. Paul's here from Psychology. Stephen Hickson from Economics and Finance. Stephen here? Not here. Okay, and Nicola Petty from Management Science. And just, just um, you, some of you who might be taking the core sciences will be um, wondering about the breadth of subjects. These are all subjects that you can take for your science degree, just in case you didn't know that already. And there are some other subjects that are not represented too, but we won't dwell on that. Also at the front, um, we have a student panel, and these, there's these four students here, Emma, Isla, Cameron and Cameron, just to make it easier, two Camerons. Only one name to remember. These students were all over there in the audience this time last year. Or in Emma's case, Emma's been here a couple of years now, so Emma's um, taking second and third year papers. 
These students were all in your shoes a year ago, and I've asked them to come here to be ready to take questions. I thought that might be one of the most useful things we could do, is have some students who um, were over there last year and what they've learned in the last year in terms of how to deal with uni. And there'll be an opportunity to ask them questions later. Just want to say a few things about how and why learning at university is different. Really just to help you hit your stride sooner rather than later um, at university. And we had a really interesting conversation, um, Cameron, Cameron, Isla and Emma and I, yesterday about the, the most important challenges they realised in the first couple of months at uni. And some of what I'm going to say today is based on that conversation. One thing that's different to school is that um, for most of your subjects you will have lectures and some kind of lab or practical or tutorial that goes with the lecture that's in that one course. And you have to schedule and be at both the lectures and the labs. So whereas at school for a biology lesson, for example, you might have gone to the biology lab and had the whole biology lesson there. Here at uni you'll find that the lectures are essentially the theoretical and uh, introduction to what you're going to be doing in the lab and they're linked together or the lab may elaborate and broaden on what you do in lectures okay so that's a little bit different to the way that things are handled at schools so there's two things to get yourselves to two things to be organized for the second really important point and I'm sure that you somewhere you already know this and at one level the difference between school and uni is that uni your success here is all about your willingness to be an independent learner and to take on the challenge, as the Vice-Chancellor said in that video. Nobody is checking up whether you've read the lecture notes, taken lecture notes, or anything like that. Nobody's going to ask you the next day, did you take good notes? Nobody's checking up. Nobody's checking whether you've done the readings, often. So you need to hit your pace quickly and not wait for disaster to happen because you haven't got round to doing, sorting out your lecture notes. You haven't got round to going to the library. And one of the things we talked about yesterday was that issue of, you know, you're, you may well be set an essay that's due in in two months. And if you're not organised and you don't get onto your independent learning, suddenly a week before you'll realise that this piece of work that was supposed to take you two months, you've only got a week to do because nobody was asking you how you're getting on. Okay. So you really need to um, hit your paces, take responsibility for your own learning. The, at first at university, you'll have less interaction, probably, with most of your lecturers than you would with your teacher at school. Um, one course, for example, there may be several lectures and there are several different lecturers presenting that course. You might have one lecturer for one week and then there'll be another lecturer next week. And they're not going to come up to you and say, how are your notes going? They're not going to come up to you and just check that you're writing the right things down. Yeah, so not like school, you probably have less contact at first. I've put at first in brackets because by the time you get to third year at university, and if any of you choose to go on to postgraduate study, um, then you'll be interacting regularly with your lectures in a completely different way. So it changes very much over time. And I'm sure you experience that at high school, the difference between when you were year 9 and year 13. And it's similar at uni, only that change happens quicker. OK? The other thing, I just wanted to introduce you to the Mark scheme at university, um, which is very different to um, those of you who've come through the NCA pathway, which will probably be most of you. Very different to the NCA where you get excellence, merit achieved or not achieved. For most items of work at university, you'll get a letter grade going from A plus, A, A minus, B plus down to, hopefully none of you will ever get an E. Um, a D or an E is a failing grade and every other grade is a passing grade. For each of those grades, for the, for the overall course, you'll get a number of points. So an A plus is equivalent to nine points, an A is equivalent to eight points, etc. Working your way down, and the each course is added up and divided by the number of courses. And as you go on through uni, you'll have what's called a GPA. And how many of you heard of a GPA before? Okay, cool. Right, you know what it is. Uh, if I'm teaching my grandmother to suck eggs, forgive me for those of you who already know this. If you don't, I hope it's useful. Um, GPA is the, your grade point average and reflects your overall level of performance. What you want to be aiming for is a high GPA. Can I stop that interference? 
it's just fading back off the... Okay. The other thing is to um, be re aware that your degree is unlikely to be identical to anybody else's degree. The person that you're sitting next to in your labs or your lectures is not likely to be taking the same package of courses as you are. And I know at school it will have been like that. People are taking all sorts of different combinations of NCEA. At university, it's even more like that. So it's a kind of a design your own package. If you're mainly interested in biology but also would like to do a bit of uh, music or sociology or whatever it might be, you can do that at uni. You can also change. If you, you know, came in here thinking you were bustingly interested in chemistry, have some kind of epiphany in the middle and decide you want to do geography, we can work with you to work out how to do that. <laughs> Jan doesn't think that's likely. And so it's eminently flexible. If you find out that you've um, made a mistake in your choices, don't panic. Okay? Seek advice. Just a little bit about um, the people who actually be teaching you. And I, um, I haven't used the word teacher because we don't use the word teacher, apart from in the sense of teaching is what they do. Um, your lecturers and tutors, most of them will be not only teachers, but they'll also be researchers. So your teachers at school tend to be teachers, and that's their main focus of their job. For university academic staff, they've got two, two main bits of their job, one of which is to teach you guys, and the other part is to do research. As you go further on in your um, um, studies, when you get to third year, when you're in second year, you'll start to see, and hopefully at first year, some of you will see it at first year, you'll start to see the results of that staff member's research informing what you are learning. And that's one of the key differences between learning at school and learning at university is the people who are teaching you are actually researchers as well as teachers. And both of those things are very important to the university and to most of the staff who will be um, teaching you. Most or many of the people who are teaching you have got three university degrees. They'll have a BSc or a BA, they'll have a master's degree and a PhD as well, which is the um, research degree. And some of you will end up doing PhDs. Most are internationally well-known in their area. They're writing papers for research journals that are viewed by an international audience, not just a national audience. Some, some of the people who teach you are going to be postgraduate students. Usually those people will be the people who are taking you in labs, um, working as demonstrators in the labs, um, sitting down next to you and making sure the experiment's going okay when you're doing your lab, guiding you through that. So some of those people are going to be postgraduate students. And um, you might think you can tell by the age, but you won't be able to tell by the age. So just now moving on to a few hints for success. Now presumably um, you're all organised enough to turn up here. You're all gaggingly keen to do really well to get those A pluses and those A's. Um, so, so here's some hints as ha to how to make that happen. All of this is about independent learning. Nobody's going to be checking up whether you are at lectures. Lecturers do not take a roll call. They're not going to be ringing your parents or ringing your mobile if you don't turn up. So to a degree, that's your choice. Go to lectures. You miss out hugely if you don't go to lectures. We do have some students who try to rely on um, the lecture notes that are put up on the web, and many courses will have their lecture notes on the web. It's really hard to do well if that's what you're going to do. Go to lectures. Go to labs. Labs are a bit different. Some labs, some practicals, there will be essentially um, an attendance part of that. Okay? You're more likely to be noticed if you don't turn up to a lab or a tutorial or something. But go to them. You cannot succeed at university. When I'm talking about succeeding, passing, and doing well, you cannot do that if you don't turn up. Besides which, you've paid your money. Why on earth would you not go? Take good lecture notes. Again, this is going to be something you're going to be learning on the job. Um, give it a go. Give different ways a go. There are some students, I've, I've got here take good lecture notes, but I think it's worth mentioning. There are some students who prefer to just listen 
and then they go home and then they write. Up to you. Experiment with various ways of doing it for you. The, the one I've got in big letters here is read. And um, people talk about reading for a degree. Have you heard that term? Going to university to read for a degree? Anybody? A couple of nods. Yeah, okay. There's a, there's a good reason for that. And because reading is, again, a key to success. It's part of the independent learning. Read all your handouts in detail. Rule number one, read your handouts. They may have dates for essays in. They'll explain what the waiting for the different parts of the assessment is. If you don't read it, you won't know. And nobody's going to come and check you've read it. This came from um, Cameron, Cameron Ellis on the panel, who said it took him a while to con on to that when he started. And led to, I presume it led to a few problems, Cameron, but we won't go into that. If you, buying a textbook is no substitute for reading it. Just because you bought it doesn't mean you know the stuff in it. So if you buy it, read it. That came from, who was that who said that yesterday? That was brilliant. Although, also items that you photocopy, photocopying or scanning something is no substitute for reading it either. It doesn't automatically get scanned into your brain. And, of course, your own lecture notes. And it expects you to take some time to get really good at making good lecture notes. And get yourself organised. Use a diary. Use the UCSA diary. Now, what's it to do with it? You've all got one of these, have you? Been handed out free? Don't just get one. Use it. Don't just put things in it. Consult it. <laughs> no good just putting things in it. It's like photocopying an article and sticking it on a shelf. Um, put the deadlines for your assignments in here. Okay? They'll be in your handouts. They'll be given to you, but nobody's going to be um, drilling it into you and giving you a, de uh, a countdown on it. Put your lab times in there. Put your lab rooms in there. Work out where things are and when they are. Another hint for success is to familiarise yourself with various things. And, and presumably most of you will be spending a little bit of orientation week doing this. Um, how many of you have had a look at Learn yet? Great, some of you have had a look at Learn. Um, Learn is the online um, learning support tool that the University of Canterbury uses. You've probably had something similar at school called something else, Blackboard or something like that at school. Um, Learn is the one we use at the University of Canterbury. Um, get onto that and just have a fiddle around. Start to get familiar with it. You're probably going to be using that on a daily and if not more than once a daily basis. Different courses have different things on Learn, but, but um, you may be involved in discussions, you may be able to access your lecture notes, you may submit your assignments on Learn. So, Make yourself familiar with that. The library and its collections. The library um, reopened this week. After there's been some major work gone on in the library. Go in there, have a look. Just spend half an hour walking around. You don't have to look for anything in particular. You might like to find something to look for just to set yourself a challenge. Find a book that you used at school. Go find a book in the library. Look at the online collections of the library. There's a phenomenal amount available online, and probably most of you are going to be dealing with a lot of online stuff. Yeah? Have a look around. Spend some time just looking around. The campus, the fact that you're here, suggests that you are getting to know the campus a little bit. Check out the Learning Skills Centre online. This is a centre for students. You may already know something about this. Um, it's a really good place to improve your skills. Lecture notes. What's a good way to take lecture notes? Essay writing at university. How do I do that? How do I do a lab report? There's lots of stuff online and there's also there's a centre near UCSA. Also, make sure that you know where to get help and advice. The Vice Chancellor said, um, cha rise to the challenge, seek help when you need it. And that's what um, you need to do. Independent learning doesn't mean to say you have to cope with everything on your own. Okay, I think what we'll do now is we'll move into um, questions and answers. I'm just going to get the four um, student panel members here just to say, um, go, we're going to go along in a row um, and just get them to say um, where they're from, um, which school they came from, and what they're doing at uni. Okay? Great. Go ahead, Emma. Kia ora, everyone. Um, my name is Emma Puloka. I'm an international student from Tonga, so I went to school in Tonga High School and I came to Christchurch for 
just to attend this great university. And I'm doing a BSc in biology, and this is my third year here. Hi everyone, I'm Isla. Um, I come originally from Christchurch. I was homeschooled and I'm doing a Bachelor of Science in Biological Sciences. Okay, um, yeah, my name's Cameron Ellis. I came from Christchurch and went to Shirley Boys around here. Yeah, no, not good. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm doing a BSc in Psychology and it's really awesome, so do it. Yeah. Hey guys, I'm Cameron Dyer. I come from Ellesmere College. I had a stand in row of 500 students, so coming to a uni like this was a big wake up call. I'm doing a major in biochemistry and chemistry. Yeah. Right, so, so, um, somebody please ask questions, don't be shy. Um, and if you, if you have a specific person you'd like to ask a question, then you say that. And if, if they don't say who it's for, can you guys work out to yourselves who answers it? Well, it where do we get our lab coats and goggles? Is this a library center? Library centre? Library centre? Library centre? I've been about five hours finding this out. Um, <laughs> with the closing down of the system we did last year, apparently you will pay for the uh, lab coats and glasses at the copy centre in the second level of the library. And I don't think that counts close, do it? However, Paul got different information in that day. I think you were right. Yeah. Go with you. Yeah, so what you do is you go and pay for them and get a chip, and then you take the chip, regardless of what subject you're doing, all lab coats and glasses are issued from the chemistry department stock room. So you go to the stock room on the first floor of the chemistry department, though sometimes that gets shifted to the stage one labs, which are on the second floor, there will be big notices up by the lips as you come in the building. So read the notices and they will tell you exactly where to take your chip to get your lab coats and glasses. Lab manuals are a different issue this year. They will be given out to you at your first lab. Yeah, is it yep. important that I get a lab coat? Absolutely important. Well, I don't know about other subjects, but you can't get in the door in chemistry without a lab coat and glasses. But don't panic. If you lose them or forget them, it's very easy to lose them or forget to bring them. Because we do have some on loan, and always there's some people who are waiting for funds to come through, they haven't got the money, so don't feel you can't come to a lab because you haven't got the gear, because we will lend it to you. But we won't be lending it to you for the whole semester, just to get you off the ground. Don't panic about any of those kind of things. Come and find someone, me in particular, if you have those sorts of problems and we will sort it out for you. Whatever, this is the best piece of advice I can give, is don't not turn up to something because you don't think you've got all the gear or you haven't paid all the money or whatever. Go to your lectures, go to your labs and we'll sort it out as time goes by. Question. Another question. <coughs> How much do they cost? How much do they cost? I don't know. About $30. I think we've put $30 in chemistry information. Somebody's not going to say $30. $30. $30 for the goggles. $30 for the goggles. And for the goggles. I don't know if there is, but we used to run a second hand thing on the main Okay. Great. Any more questions, please? Questions, please.
will have a list of your assessment items in it. It will probably have a list of the deadlines. It will tell you about the labs. All that stuff will tell you if to talk to if it's a problem. All that sort of thing. Okay? Course outline, really important document. Read, digest, file somewhere carefully. It should all be on learn. All the course handouts should be on learn. So if you dash off after this, all the important courses on learn. Tell someone if the handout isn't on. Um, the chemistry one won't be there because we've just found a mistake in it yesterday and we're busily changing it. <laughs> okay, what do you want to do to the student panel? Yeah. How recommended readings are, like, are they actually very useful or just like, kind of like course? Because like, I have one for like 300 bucks and uh, I'll, I'll just talk on that first. Um, all books that are like recommended from your courses are all found in the library. I found that when I... Is it not on there? Oh. He's just waving at me. Um, yeah, uh, so I think he's just saying hi. Um, so yeah, all, all recommended books, I found it was so much easier to just go to the library. Firstly, you don't have to cart it around all day because they're massive. Like the chemistry book is about 40 kgs. And um, she weighed it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it, you don't have to spend that much money. But other people have other opinions. Um, the recommended text, they can be helpful. If you do buy it, definitely read it. Um, even if you don't buy it, I would definitely read it. <laughs> that really made a lot of sense. <laughs> read it, but you don't have to buy it. Unless you really want to do that course aiming general direction, then yes. Just a word on that. Um, you may like to wait a bit before you buy the textbooks. Be aware that um, the library has collections that are available for three hour loan. There's various lengths of loan in the library. So, so the core textbooks tend to be on short loan. So you can set aside an afternoon for yourself to spend in the library or whatever it might be. Now those tend to get fairly heavy demand around exam time <coughs> and everyone's wanting them. But bear in mind that they will be available on what's called um, restricted loan. Okay? Good question. Can I just sort of say something about the textbooks for a second? I, I'm from physics, and uh, I think one thing you'll find is that the practices are different from departments. Yeah. Department. You need to read the course handout and see how things are different in one department compared to another. In physics, for example, I'd really recommend you always buy the textbook in the first year course, it's, uh, it's, it's referred to incredibly heavily, all the lecture notes and used in the lectures are based on the, on the, the, um, the textbook and I think it would be very difficult to pass the course without using it, so, but that would be different in other courses, so I think you're going to talk to your yeah. lecturer, read the course handout. Yeah, question here. Is it necessary to buy brand new textbooks? No. <laughs> but price for shortest answer. Uh, there's a second hand book sale in March and stuff, so they sell old textbooks that people want to sell. Also, Amazon, the um, online store, is really cheap. You can usually get them for about a quarter of the price, and if you're going second hand, about a tenth of the price. So, yeah, that's way cheaper. Just be careful when you're buying a second hand textbook that you have the right edition, because different editions have different information. So, yeah, great. Question here? The labs are like three hours long. Are they really intense? Is that biology? Yeah. Oh, no, the labs are all good fun. No, you'll go. Oh, no, I mean, I'm really going to talk about it for three hours. As, as a, as a it's a long time, and people aren't used to three hour labs, yeah. I suspect. How long are your labs at school, most of them? It's an hour. Yeah. 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 You've got to focus, keep with it. Uh, you'll get used to it within a year or yeah, two. Yeah. <laughs> Just. Yeah. Hopefully, they're well, hopefully, they're well designed, and there's not too much jump into the lab, although that can happen. If you've got comments on the labs, you always give us feedback. If you've got critical comment, positive or negative, and you'll get the chance to uh, give feedback to the courses uh, throughout the whole year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so just to add on to that, um, to me the labs are really intense, but just make sure you eat before <laughs> <laughs> you get hungry. 
I'll go to the toilet. <laughs> I'll be like, let you out. <laughs> you don't want to hear your lab partner's stomach grumbling or anything during the lab, but the, the labs are fun. Just get to know your lab partner and also read the lab manual before you get to the lab, not while Jan is yelling at you to read the lab manual. <laughs> I don't yell. <laughs> Just a word on labs and practicals. They will be very different from um, program to program and sometimes from course to course within the same program, within the same department, that is. So um, these comments about lab manuals and three hours and, um, you know, it's an endurance event. There seems to be a difference of opinion between Emma and Paul on that one. Um, they will vary hugely from department to department. So just keep your eyes and ears open and don't... don't develop assumptions and expectations about how things will be. Just be ready to receive whatever it is that comes your way. I think, doesn't chemistry have four hour labs? Aren't there some? Uh, second year and third, second and third year. Oh, three hour labs were first year. And quite frankly, well organised people can have a coffee break in the middle. And that shows a degree of organisation that I'm always frankly quite admiring of. <laughs> so you know, it's not a lockdown situation. There is something that you have to get done. And as Jan says, if you are well organised and onto it um, and work well um, as a team with whoever you've got to work with, then um, you may be able to take a break in the middle. Oh, the biology might have lockdowns, I don't know. It's all a rumour. <laughs> okay, more questions. Yeah, here. Yeah. Um, what's the main biology textbook? There's just been a new edition. Do they want to figure that out? Cool. Yeah, we're on to edition 9 of the biology textbook. Uh, that's the good news, it keeps us up to date with all the modern advances. The bad news is it hasn't arrived in the bookshop yet. <laughs> so the publisher's representative <coughs> told me about a week ago. Um, hopefully it will arrive by the end of next week or the week after. But to help you along, we've put PDFs of the first chapters that we'll need to refer to today on Learn. So Learn is really useful for um, doing things of that sort. So biologists, your reading from the textbook for the first couple of weeks will be on Learn. It's on Learn now if you want to get going. There you go. Please. Question there. Um, I never learned very similar to that in scientists, but would I So you've got edition seven? Yes. Uh, edition 7, real 987. That was brought out in 2005, I think. Um, there have been a few advances since then. <laughs> yeah, you could probably do that. So, all the animals are completely different now. <laughs> Okay, you can, you, can, you can finish that off later, you guys. <laughs> Question there. Um, what do you do if you have a lecture and a lab straight up for each other? Do you recommend um, giving your lecture like two minutes earlier or one minute earlier? Yeah. Um, le uh, lectures finish, let's say it's in the morning. A lecture will finish at 11 o'clock. Your lab will start at 11.10. You've got 10 minutes. It's fine. I actually like to put the... Oh, the other way around, sorry. Uh, Le lectures are finish. 50 minutes long. Yeah. They're not one hour long. Yeah. Okay? So yeah. they, they're supposed to finish at 10.2 in the morning. The, the, the timetable is a bit complicated. It's a complicated transition across the middle of the day. But bottom line is lectures are 50 minutes long. And for precisely that reason, for people who need to get across campus for a lab or another lecture. Okay? Afternoon, everything after one o'clock starts at ten past the hour. And I remember turning up for a class at two o'clock and no one was there. I think, oh shit, what? <laughs> <laughs> I've moved it. It actually starts at ten past the hour, so your lab starts at ten past two or ten past three or whatever the time is. So in the morning it's on the hour, finishing at ten two, and in the afternoon ten past one, ten past two, ten past three, and it will finish on the hour. So if you're coming to a lab and you're a first year at two o'clock, you're thinking you're going to one, you're not, everyone will start long in the afternoon. Looks like Cameron's got something to and say. And they actually start at that time. Yeah. You don't rock up late to the lectures and stuff because then everyone has to stop, watch you walk in the room and sit yeah. down. And it's quite <laughs> embarrassing. Can, can you imagine having to walk in here when the lecture started? Yep. It is a bit of a public experience. Can I just say as well, because you may be in the 
this lecture theatre for, say, a maths course or a stats course or one of the bigger courses, and they may be being videoed. So we get people walking in the front and across the in front of this uh, here, you're on the video. <laughs> Find a way out of the back and the door and look at it so that if you are late, you can come in sneakily without anyone to see it. Okay, Simon wants to pull his oar in too, so go for it, Simon. I was just listening to all the dire warnings about having to uh, be independent and, uh, and so on, and uh, realising that while that's absolutely true and you really do need to take care of your own learning, you, you should be appreciative, well, you should understand that there's a lot of uh, support here for you, right? Yeah. The supervisors are selling for you, you need to be able to use the department, of course, lecturers are willing to help, there are tutors who are willing to help, uh, for example, if you want to help it, which are uh, available. At lunchtime, to just go and ask questions of. So there's always support there, and in the college office especially, um, there's always support for whatever kind of problem it is that you've got. So you know, while you are expected to take some individual responsibility, please do take advantage of the things that are available. Great. Okay, we'll take one more question. With um, if we can keep the answer short, please, just because we're nearly out. Please, to, yeah, you, yeah, great. Yeah. Indeed, it does. Yeah, the, you will be out of the door. You, if and if you haven't finished, and sometimes there'll be things that you need to come back and finish off, then you'll have the opportunity. But but everybody's aware that people have got other things to go to. That timetables are tight. Great. Now I'm going to just um, cease the questions and answers for now. I know that um, the students are available afterwards and they're willing to hang around outside if you'd like to just go up and ask them a question or two. And I think that most of the departmental staff are able um, to just hang around a bit at the outside as well if you've got a few more questions. There's another question here if you want to follow up on that. Um, and I've just got a few things that I just wanted to say um, before we finish. And We've been talking about the academic side of things. Work hard. Just because nobody's checking what you do, don't slack off. Being at university, for most of you, will be your full-time job. You should be planning to spend like 40 hours on campus and not sloping out of bed at quarter to 11, going to your lecture, going back to bed at quarter past 12. That's not how it is. Okay? Work hard. Don't forget to play hard too. Um, you know, there's lots of fun to be had in your learning, and Paul just made the claim that uh, three-hour biology labs were fun, and perhaps four-hour chemistry labs are fun too. So there's fun to be had in your learning, but also take the opportunities on campus. Have a look at the clubs. There's fantastic things you can do here. This can be the best time of your life if you make the most of it. When the going gets rough, or even when you need some help to work out what to do, seek advice and help. I've said it once, I'll say it again. Being an independent learner doesn't mean that you can't ask for advice and help. It means that you're seeking guidance to do the best you can as an independent learner. And sometimes things may go off the rails. Um, if something happens to you during the term when you've got an essay due, if something happens and you can't get to the exam, there are, we have systems and processes in place to help. Okay, So ask. I've seen a lot of students over the last few weeks who haven't bothered to ask for help and have got themselves into real trouble with their grades because they didn't bother to ask. Or they couldn't work out how to ask. Have fun, that relates to both the learning and the playing, the work and the play. And I'm sure you don't need it, but good luck to you in your studies and uh, look forward to seeing you around campus.